of the day, what she feels inside, the limiting factors that come from inside. So what I tell people is I'm a business strategy and leadership coach and I help women to build their brand and business inside out. Mm -hmm. Because even as an entrepreneur or professional, your image is an extension of who you are. Sri Lanka Insurance Motor Plus, driven by you. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of The Hot Seat, the business edition. And Lloyd and I today are going to be talking to Sunila Jaisuria. She's CEO of Women Empowered Global. And that's just only a part of what she does. She's also a very successful entrepreneur. And we're going to kind of tap into some of those secrets uh, behind the brilliance to make up uh, who she is and what keeps her going. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been a particularly tough time uh, to be able to sit down and talk to people throughout you know, what's been going on with COVID-19. So we're really excited to have a one-on-one, -on -one, face to face with you. So thank you for doing that. I'm happy to do this. Thank mm -hmm. you for getting me out. <laughs> Um, right, so before we start, let's ask you um, the first question to break the ice. Describe yourself in five words. Ooh, okay. Um, tenacious, visionary, creative, fierce, loving. Powerful. Wow. So wow. <laughs> she touched a little bit of everything. Yeah. And I think that is a great segue into how did Women Empowered Global come about. It's a wonderful network of women from around the world, but this was an idea of yours. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so happy you asked. So Women in Power Global, we're a global platform around the world. We have presence in over 23 countries. Uh, and what we do is we empower women around the world through education, through career advancement and entrepreneurial programs. And I'm so passionate about talking about Women in Power Global. It gets my heart pumping every time. Long story short, I was in between a career transition. I had just uh, given up my uh, IT country manager position because I was in a process of soul searching for something bigger than myself. Mm. I was, ex you know, it wasn't just about the money for me. I was very successful, earning well, but then I just felt empty. And I, I, I wonder how many watching today could relate to that. I just felt so empty. And I remember this was 2017 and it was a, a year of questioning, bless you. I'm not kidding. I just kept asking myself questions. Sanella, yes, you're successful, but are you happy? Right. What is your calling? What right. do you want to be doing? And then I started looking around and it was like this moment mm -hmm. where it came to me like an Eureka moment and it said, I want to empower one million women in my lifetime. Wow. And it was a massive year of questioning for yeah. me. And boom, the minute, it's so interesting how the universe works. Mm -hmm. The minute you have this clarity, because you're searching and you put that out, something just lands. And how it lands goes boom, and it just explodes. Now you're taking on the role of a, of a mentor, a coach, as a guide to a lot of people um, out there. Who would you uh, say had a similar effect on you? Someone who you look up to as a coach. Um, has there been someone like that for you in life? Oh. You know what, um, I get asked this question a lot. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't know me, but I know him. Yeah. So, <laughs> Stephen Covey, Terry Savelle, yeah. uh, Tony Robbins, uh, these are the people. Mm -hmm. These are the giants, uh, you know, that I aspire to, uh, you know, because I, I love their value propositions. I love what they stood for. I love their tenacity. And um, also, I'd like to mention my mom, because, um, you know, um, I was raised in a very traditional background, right. but my mom, she's fierce. Mm -hmm. Mom, if you're watching, you know you, dad knows you. Good job. <laughs> uh, so it's interesting because in the home front, there was this weird dynamic of me being raised extremely, extremely like traditionally and yeah. sheltered. Yeah. But at the same time, you have this mom, like a mother figure who is out there slaying it <laughs> in the professional world. So that was an interesting dynamic to yeah. see. So I think that also sort of evoked the idea, is there more to this stereotype right. going on? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I would say my mom would definitely be one of them. So if you could go back in time, and you know how you said, you, you know, among young girls, 14 to 18, there is a drop of self-confidence. Is this in Sri Lanka? 
Yeah. No, it, global, it's, it's global. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This study was really done in US. This yeah. was a study in US. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see how it resonates. I mean, I'm thinking US, first world economy. If it's yeah. happening there, right. I can yeah. only imagine yeah. how it would happen in other yeah. economies. Because what we see in Sri Lanka is when girls hit a certain age, they suddenly they go from being a child to now you're a young lady. You've got to act a certain way. Uh, I see this with my daughter a lot too, already. I see people say, oh, here we go, you should sit this way. Mm. You know, so there's a lot of uh, things that, you know, uh, all these, uh, for, uh, these normal habits that you're supposed to fall into, they limit you in a lot of ways. Um, so it's a difficult thing in Sri Lanka, I feel. So for you working with uh, Sri Lankans, women in the workforce, or people that you train, what is the biggest issue that you find? Uh, they must all have a common barrier. Uh, what is the most common one? That's a powerful question. You know why? There is never an automatic response for that. You ask that question in different parts of the world and what I've answered is it's a different answer every time. Mm -hmm. But one common thread that I see going across geographies when you talk about empowerment and women, I'll direct it back to our slogan at Women Empower Global, which is shatter your glass ceiling. So what I'm seeing is when I work with women from different cultures, from different backgrounds, because I work with multi-sectorial women, and I'm thinking, you know what? There's fear, there's nature, there's a mix of nurture, experiences, personality, there's all these things that would composite who this goddess is or this woman is. But end of the day, what she feels inside, the limiting factors that come from inside. So what I tell people is I'm a business strategy and leadership coach and I help women to build their brand and business inside out. Mm -hmm. Because even as an entrepreneur or professional, your image is an extension of who you are. Right. So if you see yourself less, so we start with, to answer your question directly, start with the inner glass ceiling. Mm -hmm. it's, so a lot of the focus is, yes, definitely, changing policy, changing mm -hmm. this, trying to work on social uh, norms, skills absolutely, assessment. skills assessment, you know skills are. absolutely, we need to do all of that, but at the same time, the faster way is not changing what's out there, the fastest way, because that's a marathon, it's mm -hmm. not a sprint, but yeah. the sprint would look like when you go within and internally empower her. Your limits, your own absolutely. Limits. Yeah. So what we do is we do a skill assessment at Women Empower Global, so anybody who wants to join our network, uh, there's no one remedy, one shoe fits all scenario yeah. like in real life. So we do a skill assessment, a strength-based assessment and say, okay, these are the sort of opportunities that we can present to you within our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Let us know what you think. Very interesting. So, the, so in terms of your uh, entrepreneurship, your own business, do, where does that tie in with Women's Empowerment Global? Is it two separate things? Did one spur the other? What's the day job? I am so grateful that I have that. It's yes. so important as an entrepreneur, especially to establish the moment I have today. I have been, I bootstrapped Women Empowered Global and a lot of it was because I had this huge passion and dream and I wanted other women to have opportunities that I felt I didn't. I didn't have right. a mentor growing up. I right. didn't have certain opportunities. I saw discrimination happening. How can we support? Yeah. So this was that situation. I have sponsored so many scholarships for women around the world. Mm -hmm. I have projects running in women in Africa. And I, none of that would have been possible if I didn't pursue my own business as well. So in addition to this, I have my global consultancy right. and I do C-level training, executive coaching and throughout, like I said, whilst working in my companies as multinationals, I always had a side job as a right. trainer yeah. and I've been working with very big companies with a lot of these fortune, you know, these top yeah. companies yeah. I've been training. So a mix of my background in global brands mm -hmm. because of my advertising career then a mix of my background with general management right. because of that IT country manager position and also uh, at uh, uh, you know uh, marketing because of the marketing that package together and my training experience I was able to launch my own boutique global consultancy right. and that has been funding a lot sponsoring a lot of the initiatives you That's see amazing. today yeah. so that is the power of economic empowerment and what I believe is if the more income you make the more impact you can reach. Mm -hmm. You can't get it the other way around. Yeah. Because that is what's empowering. People want to be somebody who has something. Mm -hmm. They want to aspire towards. Right. So that economic empowerment is, is, is very important.
Um, so speaking of barriers, right? I mean, leaving aside your personal barriers, um, on a general scale, what do you think uh, needs the most amount of change to make it a more level playing field? For women and everyone, really. What women need that I see is equal opportunity. There has to be equity across the board. And having said that, I think it's also fair that women are given extra support. Mm -hmm. Not to perform on the job, but to empower her home front yes. or empower her resources in such a way because when you look at a woman they yeah. say in you know UN published a statistic even during COVID the workload mm. of women is heightened if at all because you're working from home absolutely with your other work yeah. uh, piled on top of that so you've got exactly. you brought work home to another work front for a woman exactly yeah. so it's heightened so if yeah. at all don't discriminate her if she wants support it's a necessity. Yeah. Do you it's see a necessity. that? Uh, do you see that change happening in Sri Lanka? Where I mean, as you're doing these trainings um, for uh, you know the women in these businesses, they're able to voice out some of the needs that they have to be able to not just perform, but to be able to do better. Where they feel like they're able to focus more at work because they may have the crashes, or you know they have the opportunity to work from home at least twice a week or um, you know even even upping their income to be able to afford a daycare or you know child support or something like that so there are some new trends that i have been observing during covid a lot mm -hmm. of women who are having full-time jobs are also looking at freelance positions on the yeah. side there's yeah. hustling yeah. Yeah. because they realize they need that mm -hmm. and uh, also the work from home situation has presented new opportunities where you know women are now able to sort of you know uh, also have that sense of, oh, I'm at the home, I'm closer yeah. to home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, there is also the woman who doesn't have the support and she is in the middle of the pandemic. Right. What do we do about her? Yeah. What can we do for her? Uh, you know, at an institutional level, how can an institution look at a quick remedies, agile policies to make sure they adapt with COVID and sustain these women? Right. Because it's not going anywhere. It's not soon. going anywhere. So yeah. the question mark would be here at an institutional level, at a social level, at a cultural level, at an economic level. What can we do as a society, as a nation, to make this better for women? What can we do? What can we do? Yeah. Um, I think definitely the policies have to come together. But what I see is it's incremental. It's not going to be like this exponential leap saying, oh, we have COVID and by January or by June, everything's going to be adjusted. Everything's going to be agile. So it's an incremental process. But leadership needs to be number one on that mandate because leadership needs to drive change. It cannot happen bottom up. It has to happen top bottom. So leadership needs to agree on that vision. They need to repurpose. How do we factor in the population of women in our organization more effectively during pandemic? What are some of those things that are happening in a home front that we weren't ready to consider even before COVID? There could yeah. be new challenges yeah. that these women are going facing, mm -hmm. going through. Well, there you go. I don't know about you, but it certainly left me with a lot to think about. <laughs> um, but thank you, Sunella, for taking your time out today to come and sit with Lloyd and myself. Uh, don't forget to, um, you know, to stay tuned for our future episodes with The Hot Seat with Lloyd and myself, the business edition. Thank you for watching and do share the video and tag us as well. Give us a like. Bye. Sri Lanka Insurance Motor Plus, driven by you.